Hello, Joe Neville here, back with another AOS CX Basics video. In this one, we are going to be configuring internal BGP. Internal BGP or iBGP gives you BGP's focus on scalability, control and filtering, but it runs within an autonomous system or AS for short. And that's a group of devices under the same management. Why might you run it? Well, if your setup is anything but the most basic, so if you're running something like a dual homed AS or more, you might not want to rely on default gateways. And if you've got eBGP at the edge, giving your internal devices a view of the outside world, how are they going to learn that well, you're going to have to redistribute your eBGP into your IGP. So like eBGP into OSPF. And you and that's not impossible, but you might want to avoid that behavior and take a consolidated approach. So if you deploy iBGP, you're taking a BGP approach with your control and filtering, etc., both inside your AS and outside your AS. Now, iBGP has an interesting loop prevention mechanism. And this is one of the basics, but it's always worth remembering because it informs so much of the protocol, the, this flavor of BGP. So if you think about the loop prevention mechanism for BGP, which is AS path, as the prefix moves between the ASs, the speakers add the AS number to the AS path. And if they see their AS in a BGP update, then it's rejected because that must mean that it's looped round. You can't do that with iBGP because it's all within the same AS. So AS path is essentially useless. Um, and so there's not a, an actual special mechanism for loop prevention. It's what the protocol doesn't do. And what it doesn't do is it doesn't forward on iBGP learnt prefixes onto iBGP peers. So if you've got a device within an AS that's injecting a root, that will be forwarded onto its IBGP peer. And if you have an eBGP learnt prefix, that will be forwarded onto an IBGP peer. But if it goes from IBGP, so it's IBGP learnt, for it won't then go on to another IBGP peer within the same AS because that could cause a loop. Now, uh, and that's why we have this rule of with IBGP, you need to have full mesh to avoid this. So all IBGP speakers should have BGP connections to each other, or you can deploy something like root reflectors that override these rules with special functionality or you can have confederations. But I won't go into those now because that's more of an advanced topic. We're just gonna look at the basics. Here's my network of Aruba AOS CX 6300s. So I've got three of them in this setup. I've already configured dash two and dash three. So with, those are all ready to go. And I'm for my to-do list, I'm going to configure iBGP on the 6300-1. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Then I'll check on the BGP table. And then what I'm going to do so that we can dive into the protocol a little bit deeper and check out what happens in a failure scenario, I'm going to fail this link between dash one and dash two. So doesn't seem like very much, but I'm trying to keep the length of these videos down and there's quite a lot to discuss here. Here I am on my Aruba 6300-1. This is the one I'm going to configure for iBGP. I'm not going to go into each one of the really basic commands. I covered some of the real basics in my previous video. Link on screen now if you haven't watched that one about eBGP. I'm just going to pause on the new commands or the differences in the setups for iBGP. Let's remind you of the network then. So here is a diagram. I'm focusing on this dash one. And I've already configured dash three and dash two over here. Dash three is all configured, but it's disabled, so it won't come up, allowing us to just concentrate on the connection between dash one and dash two to start with. Dash two is entirely configured uh, for BGP, and I've also advertised the, a loop back and I'm redistributing static. So if BGP comes up between dash one and dash two, I should start receiving routes. And then we're going to open up dash three and move the scenario forward. Okay, let's start by diving into dash one then. No layer three routing protocol configured on this at the moment. We're focusing on the BGP peering session that will go across this slash 31 for VLAN 50. 
Okay, conf router BGP. Everything is in the AS65001. I want to log the neighbor changes. My router ID is going to be my loopback. Now for my neighbor statement. So I'm pinning the BGP sessions to the loopbacks. This is common with iBGP where you have management of all of the devices in an AS. I've got single points of failure in my diagram here, but with but the common use case is that you have redundant paths between your BGP peers. So you don't want to tie the BGP session to a single directly connected link. You tie it to a loopback so you can have multiple routes to get to that loopback. It means that the BGP connection can be resilient. So we're going to be using the loopbacks, but there's a few nuances to that. Okay, so the neighbor statement is to my loopback and then the remote AS is because it's iBGP is to the same AS. Now another thing with this, because we're using loopbacks, I'm going to put in the neighbor again and I'm going to use the command so it is update source. So this is the source address for my BGP, my TCP SYN and then the SYNAC etc. That exchange and my BGP packets are going to use the source address of my loopback. Let's go loopback zero. Okay. Now we'll do the same, I'll just up arrow for my, for dash three. So same AS and again, using the loop back as the source. Okay. So now we need to go into the address family. I'm just going to use IPv4 unicast again and turn on my neighbors in that address family with the neighbor, the IP address, and then activate up arrow and we'll do that for dash three. Good. Come out of there, I'll do a show run BGP, and this is what it looks like. So we've got my router ID, logging neighbor changes, we've got the IP address of dash two and dash three, uh, both of them in the same AS and both using the update source of loopback zero, then I've turned on the address family v4 unicast for both of those. Right, now let's have a look at show BGP all summary. What have I got? They're both idle. What's the problem here? Well, what do you think? I can't ping. The reason being that it's to a loopback. So it's not with eBGP, normally you use a directly connected link and the device will know, the local device will know how to get to it because it's got an interface on that link. But with a loopback, you don't know it's not a directly connected subnet. So you don't know how to get to it. We need a route. We can use statics, but what is a more common case is because with IBGP, it's within an AS, so within your autonomous system, that being a group of devices that you control, the standard model is that it's safe to use an IGP such as OSPF to advertise the loopbacks. So I need to do that. Right, I'm going to go router OSPF one. Area zero, okay, come out of there. Now I need to go into my VLAN. So it's VLAN 50, I'll go RSPF one, area zero, and I also want network point to point for that. Do the same for 51 up to dash three. And the other one I need to do is the loop back. IP, OSPF1, area zero. Okay, now let's have a look for my OSPF neighbors. Right, I've got two and I can, let's try pinging. That works. But the thing with that is that I'm not, remember I'm using the source of my loopback. So that ping is going to use VLAN 50 as its source address. It's always good with these pings to actually use the proper source address to get the end to end. So my source would be my loopback and that and that recreates the BGP route from loopback across VLAN 50 to loopback on dash two. And that is working. Now BGP all summary. Remember dash three is down. Okay, so dash two is up. We've got established, that's what we're looking for. Now we'll look at the BGP table. We'll just go show BGP IPv4 unicast. 
to look at the table just for our address family. And then we, that's the two loop back, uh, sorry, that's the two prefixes that I'm receiving from dash two. I've got, just like my previous video, I'm using the same setup. So that's a loop back, which I'm using a network statement and a mask to inject. That's why it's got at the end here, that's the origin code of IGP. And then I've also, I'm redistributing statics and I've got this 98 here, which has an origin code of incomplete. What else is in a bit different here? Well, there's no AS path, of course, because it's in the same AS, so you don't add anything to that. Also, what's different? Well, it's valid and best, good. That's always good to check that. I've got an I next to this, so that's in the status code, and that is I, of course, for IBGP. So that tells us that it is an internal BGP update that provided this prefix. And the next hop, so notice the next hop isn't the directly connected, it's actually the loopback is the next hop. That's an important point to pick up on, the fact that the next hop in this scenario is actually the loopback and not a directly connected. So it's a, it's not dash two's nearest interface to dash one, it's actually this BGP source address there. Now that dash one has been configured, I've jumped over to dash three and I'm going to enable BGP on here. So you can see that's the disable command in action. Let's go into here and put in enable and jump over to dash one. We'll do everything from dash one's point of view. Show BGP, what one do I want? All summary will do it for me. Okay, now we're established. And let's have a look at those BGP tables. Show BGP IPv4 unicast. Okay, now if you look across, we've got the two prefixes. The next hop's the same. The local preference is the same. The path is the same, of course. The origin, they're the same. It's essentially the same update on dash one and dash three. That doesn't sound particularly interesting, does it? Well, actually, it is quite interesting if you think about what's going on here. So let's bring up the diagram again. Can I bring that up? There we are. Um, so what we have is we've got dash two with the two prefixes and those are being advertised out in BGP updates to dash three and to dash one. That's what you can see in these two tables. But what we don't have is we don't have an update for those prefixes from dash one to dash three. Of course, here we don't see it. Um, we don't have anything from dash three to dash one. That's because it's not being sent. And the reason for that is the basic loop prevention approach of IBGP, whereby a BGP speaker will not send on a prefix that it's learned in its AS to another peer in the same AS. All other things being equal, of course, in this scenario, we're not using root reflectors here. But that has interesting implications if we lose this BGP session between dash one and dash two. What do you think is going to happen? Well, don't think on it too long. Let's actually just configure it. What I can do is jump in here, router BGP, and I'll go to my neighbor, 102. If we do a question mark, you can see there's a shutdown command. So I hit shutdown, come out of there, show BGP, we'll do all sum. You can see 102 is now idle. Now, what does our BGP table look like then IPv4 Unicode, well it's empty. Uh, it, what about dash three? Well, dash three is unaffected. And the reason for that is because of what I've just said. So this BGP session is down, the update is going up to three, but three won't forward this on to dash one because it's in the same AS. In terms of BGP, dash one is now isolated essentially because we've broken the full mesh here. Okay, but what if we bring up the BGP session, but we, I mean, so a more realistic scenario. So a more realistic scenario would be something like a cable break, like a layer one break, or the transit switch was misconfigured, someone took out a cable or something like that. So in this case, it is VLAN 50. Let's shut down VLAN 50 to simulate that type of lower level failure and then bring up BGP. Okay, so interface VLAN 50, shut, okay, 
and router bgp 65001 let's go no neighbor to shut down okay now what do you think is going to happen show bgp all summary we're actually up now what's the reason for that well it's because we're using loopbacks and of course we've got ospf as our igp which is giving us a route to the loopback of dash two so we can actually get that our tcp scene is able to get through though this vlan is down we can go via the redundant route and if we look at our bgp table v4 unicast we've got our updates the next top stays the same but if we want to forward on traffic to either one of those prefixes we will just use the route that we've got from OSPF to get to the next hop. So that's what's important here, being able to reach the next hop. Now, I thought actually when I was thinking through failure scenarios, that's actually quite an interesting, it's very basic, but it's quite an interesting way to show off some of the details about how IBGP works in this type of scenario. So if the session's down, then dash one would be isolated because we've broken the full mesh but as long as we've got a connection to the next hop in this case a loopback our ibgp session can be up and we'll still have roots in our routing table for this subnet it's details like this that can make bgp tricky when you're learning it because each individual piece of information isn't particularly difficult to grasp on its own but it's when you have to put them all together when you're troubleshooting especially when you're under pressure you're trying to troubleshoot something and you've got these protocols layered on top of each other so you've got ibgp layered on top of ospf that can be a bit tricky okay so that's it for this video thank you very much for watching i think we can take this a lot further because there's so many different things that you so many nuances and details to bgp that we can make some more uh, videos out of this but i'm as i mentioned earlier i'm trying to keep the length of the videos down and so we'll just leave it there for now please do like comment subscribe dislike all of those good things if you want to see more of this do let me know or any other topics, please let me know. But for now, my name is James Neville. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.